Hello there friendos, the boy Keelik here, welcoming you back to another awesome theory related video. Now today, we're going to be taking a look at one of my favorite games, Star Fox Assault, and the main antagonist of that game are the Aperoids. Could Earth survive an Aperoid invasion? But before we get into the nitty gritty of it, I suppose we should figure out what in the world an Aperoid is. An Aperoid is a giant metallic bug but it's also biological as well. It's they're really weird, honestly, but they're kind of kind of cool. Like I think it's one of the more creative enemies we've seen in the Star Fox universe. The Aperoids are an ancient race dating back many, many, many years ago, who are essentially this hive mind of insects that kind of mirror, like say, like an ant colony where they have like a queen, you know, maybe like a honey bee or bees or something like that. But they're really scary, actually. All right, so the Earth is, you know, we're pretty good. All right, you know, we're not intergalactic or anything like that, but you know, we got we got some firepower as well. So what are we up against? What can the Aperoids do? They can just infect machinery. There seems to be really no limit to this. As long as they can make contact with the machinery, uh, they can just infect it and control it, which is pretty terrifying. I mean, I think that goes for any kind of technology, really. So they could infect like a cell phone and be listening to every one of our words that we're saying right now. They could be watching this video, liking and subscribing, as you should too. As if that wasn't bad enough, it turns out they can adapt very rapidly and learn how to uh, just take over biological material as well. Like humans, they literally fused Pigma to a satellite and made him a boss. Yeah, that's scary. Now, of course, the issue with this would be uh, you could be infected and then immediately go and, you know, shoot your body in the back of the head. That's going to get me demonetized. Oops. <laughs> to this note, Peppy actually says that those without strong wills can easily be turned to evil, which feels a lot like foreshadowing to me. But then Peppy and General Pepper get infected anyway. And I would assume General Pepper at least has a pretty strong will. I mean, he's a general, but he gets infected anyway. So yeah, that plot point really didn't go anywhere. That does bring into consideration the fact that Star Fox actually did come into contact with the core memory that assumedly infected General Pepper. Well, we'll get to why I believe that in a little bit, but essentially, you know, what made it so that the core memory couldn't infect Star Fox, but it could infect Higma. And I think it mostly comes down to for containment of the core memory. I mean, Pigma probably just had it like, you know, in his bay, you know, in his storage. He might have had it on his lap playing around with it. Like, you know, boo, 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 look at these. Poor containment of the core memory would essentially give them an infection point inside of our research labs, which is a great place for them to have access to. On that note, any attempt to actually, you know, look into the core or anything like that, assuming maybe you could kill the core, but then it wouldn't have the memory. I assume it kind of works like a hard drive, right? Like, you can access the data on the hard drive, but there are also parts in the game where the queen knows what everything else in the hive mind knows, but it seems to be like a one-way communication, so it's complicated, but theoretically, this omniscience does uh, open up a potential vulnerability that we'll get to in a little bit later. Do you remember that part I said about having an infection point on the inside? Well, the Corneria fleet in that game, when you're off, you know, dealing with Saria, they just absolutely wipe the floor. And like, how is General Pepper gonna get infected? Assumedly, he's very well protected. I mean, the whole city was overrun, so I could definitely see that happening. But what if there was a, you know, there was an access point on the inside in that core memory that they brought back home? So just the act of researching it and being near it is extremely dangerous and opens up a back door directly to us. How in the world are we gonna research this thing? Now, I know what you're probably thinking. What about an EMP? They're all, you know, mechanics and stuff. We'll just shut them down. And that is a very fair point. Honestly, I was surprised to learn that EMPs don't exist in the Star Fox universe. Lasers, teleportation, you know, a little static discharge doesn't exist. Couldn't happen. But we do have EMPs. However, would they actually even be effective? Well, to find that out, we need to deduce exactly how in the world these, uh, you know, entities would control this biological material on the infected people. There'll be like a point of contact and then it'll like sprawl out from there, like spreading, you know, assumedly into the organs and stuff. And it kind of seems like they need the host to be alive. So that to me would imply that it requires them to have some sort of automation 
you know, keeping the vital organs alive and stuff, like all the muscles and stuff. So I think we're probably dealing with some sort of electrical sort of, you know, manipulation of the mind and of, you know, the various muscles and stuff to do the movements and everything. So I think an EMP would actually be very effective here, potentially. The Aperoids are also highly capable of mental manipulation using the actual voice of individuals. Now, let's say, you know, they hack into our comms units or something and they give orders to a battalion or a squad or whatever. I don't know the difference, if I'm honest. Someone can enlighten me in the comments below to, you know, do something that would put them in danger or, you know, anything like that. That is extremely dangerous. Bear in mind, this can also be done even without assimilating the person whose voice they want to use. They just have to assimilate someone who has a memory, a thought of the voice of the person they want to use. So any one person in a battalion immediately puts the rest of the battalion at risk. That is terrifying. Luckily, the Aperoid Queen seems to have uh, completely forgotten the art of subtlety. Mostly she just says, Give in. Give in to us. We are the best. You don't have to be unhappy. Don't fight anymore. Which is very uncharacteristic, though so ideally you would be able to tell the difference between the copy and the actual person. But again, they're highly adaptive, so it's possible that they would adapt subtlety. Just that little change is going to make things a lot scarier. <laughs> and then just to kind of tidy up the Aperoids, yeah, we're still going on the Aperoids. Look, they got a lot going for them, okay? Most of you are probably thinking the Aperoids got this, but it might not be that simple. Yes, they have near infinite numbers and can just spawn in more troops whenever they need through the use of their spawning stations. Not terrifying at all. Not to mention they have the uh, definite advantage in mobility given the fact that they can create teleportation gates right above our planet. Speaking of this teleportation gate technology, they also can just send fucking massive missiles through. Ah, oh, like the size of space stations. We don't really have any way to attack them, but they have every way to attack us. Oh, not to mention, in the last mission of the game, the Queen is able to suppress essentially a code injection into her body that is supposed to make her self-destruct. She can just say she doesn't want to do that. That was specifically made to counter her, and she just said, no thanks. And then she was going to go off and make an antibody. That's the kind of adaptivity that we are talking about here. Highly adaptive. And that brings us to Earth. What can we do to stop the Aperoid invasion? Well, we already talked a little bit about the EMPs, and those don't even exist in the Star Fox universe. Uh, however, if they did, which it wouldn't be completely out of the question to assume that they did, but I'm going to assume that they don't, because we never hear anything about them. Someone's going to correct me in the comments, and I'm going to feel like a real idiot, but it doesn't change the outcome too much anyway, so don't worry about it. There is only one instance of an EMP being even remotely used in the Star Fox universe, and it's non-canon. In the game Starfield Battle for Atlantis for the Nintendo Switch, there is a faction-exclusive faction, essentially, that allows you to play as a Star Fox team. And part of their story mission there is that they are taken down by an EMP, which to me pretty much says they have absolutely no defense against it, because that seems like a pretty common thing. You know, it, if it's that easy to take down an R-Wing, or, you know, any sort of, like, space fighter ship, then why wouldn't they just do that all the time? They would need some sort of protection against it. But again, non-canon, so I'm not going to take it into consideration too much. I just thought it was an interesting thing to point out. My next question is, what exactly would we be expecting an EMP to do? Because that's really the only thing we actually have that would do much against them. I mean, we have, you know, some experimental sort of, like, energy weapons and just very good tactical minds in the military, but... Uh, you know, would that really help too much? I mean, you know, is a sound-based or microwave-based device actually going to help a lot when we got, you know, giant missiles? So if we look at how an aperoid actually infects a target, there's kind of this, like I mentioned, this, this nub, this blob that kind of functions as, I'm assuming, like a second sort of brain. If that is, you know, using electrical signals to you know, control the rest of the body, it's possible that a specialty EMP grenade could be quickly created to target those frequencies and shut it down. Now, it is also important to note that it seems like a person can be saved from the infection, assuming it hasn't been spread too far. You know, we see uh, General Pepper. Yeah, General Pepper and Peppy. I always get those two confused. But we see them, you know, looking fine at the end when they were both very clearly infected during the events of Star Fox Assault. 
So theoretically, at least until the Aperoids adapted, we would be able to, you know, EMP the infected entities, whether they be machines or, you know, biological material, even animals wouldn't necessarily be safe. And we'd be able to remove the infection, but that's not really stopping the problem, it's just putting a band-aid on it. So what are we going to do about this? Well, there's no way for us to get an EMP to the, uh, the Aperoid homeworld, because it's in a different galaxy. So that's a big problem. I personally think that brute force is not the way to go about this. It's just a battle of attrition. They're just going to keep sending forces at us. There's not much that we're going to be able to do about that. However, we need to think a little more critically about this, and maybe we can find some sort of, you know, code execution through this, you know, neural network, essentially, that they have. Since they are all a hive mind, they are all connected. So there is a chance that if there is some sort of vulnerability in their hive mind, that we'd be able to get some code into and send it to the queen, which is exactly how our best shot at defeating this would go. The military would just have to buy time for these hackers, you know, any sort of, uh, you know, techie people to really do their job. And they would need to buy a lot of time because as you maybe recall, they are highly adapted. So we would pretty much have one shot to actually make this sort of code injection thing work before, you know, the vulnerability was essentially patched up. Now I want to talk about just some sort of neutral points. The biggest one being that since these two entities have never come into contact with one another, they will have different technologies. And therefore there will be glaring weaknesses in both sides' defenses towards one another, given the separate technologies that they've been working on. For example, the EMP thing. That may very well be something the Apoids have never had to deal with. Now, will they be able to adapt to it? Probably, but they haven't yet. Same thing for the humans. We've never dealt with these giant orbital gates. So we would have a glaring, you know, weakness in our defense there. We seem to be able to communicate with them through sort of, you know, radio frequencies or simple, simple channels. And these don't seem to be able to be infected, but maybe they can because how in the world would the Aperoids know that the Star Fox team is going to Sauria so that they can launch this massive attack on Corneria? I mean, let's be honest, Star Fox's team is really the only uh, people that are any sort of threat to the Aperoids at this point. So that, I believe, was a purposeful diversion to get them away from Corneri to take out this capital on this planet. But how would they know that? That's where I think it probably has something to do with the idea that maybe maybe they infected, uh, you know, quietly infected, rather, these two-way channels. They're already there, uh, able to receive the broadcasts, as we see in the conversation with Pigma, and in the conversation at the end of the game with the Queen Aperoid. She actually talks to us directly. No smoke and mirrors, no extra voices, just her voice, or at least a synthesization of her voice. That, to me, proves that that channel is open and therefore might be compromised. The last question that I want to sort of pose is, say that they were going to use these massive teleportation gates, you know, to send hordes of enemies through, how long would we actually have to do anything about that. Well, in the game, we actually see an orbital gate being made. It takes about a minute or so, and it's this really awesome cutscene where they go through step by step exactly what's happening. I really like the cutscene. I think it's really neat. Assuming that they have to create theirs in roughly the same way, what kind of warning do we have against that? The answer is not much. Star Fox pretty much just notes having a bad feeling about this. But even then, he doesn't really seem to notice too much unless there is you know, a lull in the action and he can actually sort of feel the quietness. So let's go through the absolute best case scenario. We know that the humans are screwed. They can't reach the Aperoid homeworld. So brute force is not the way that we're going to win this. Not at all. We can try to buy time for our researchers to make, you know, a virus or something to deal with the problem, but the odds of it working are very, very slim. It's possible that if we did manage to take down one of these higher ranking individuals in the hive mind who actually has you know higher clearance as we see in the game some of them do have uh, higher clearances than others as the first core memory that we find is damaged but the second one that we get that pigma steals actually has location of the aperoid homeworld on it whereas none of the grunts did there's a chance that we could use some sort of code to sort of infect the network best case scenario we can infect the existing Aperoids at the time and have them turn on their queen. Maybe. This is assuming that she doesn't still have some control over them and just triggers the self-destruct protocol themselves. 
these aporoids are vulnerable to apoptosis, that's actually how they are defeated in the game, which is essentially a self-destruct mechanism that kills off cells whenever their purpose has been served and they're no longer needed. This is a very common thing in nature. When the cells are done, you know, they kind of just... But again, she can just suppress that. And if she were under no pressure, she'd be able to escape, suppress it, make an antibody. So this would essentially just buy us time. Best case scenario, we're able to buy a ton of time because we have infected all available forces. Now the queen, as we see in the final boss fight, is no slouch. So she could defend herself relatively no problem. This would be great until the queen calls down more spawners to make more of her infinite and ever regenerating troops while our infected, you know, troops are very limited in numbers and eventually we'd be back to where we are in the beginning, but we would have bought some very valuable time. Problem with this being, they would most likely patch up that vulnerability very quickly. As we've mentioned, they're highly adaptive. They learned that they could infect biological mass in the course of what seems to be a night. You know, I'm not entirely sure, you know, the whole timeline of the game of Star Fox Assault, but it was not a very long amount of time. And then, you know, they were infecting people left and right. If they could have done that from the beginning, I'm assuming they would have just started with that. I hate to say it, but as my script here says, we're fucked. The Aproids have the superior firepower. They have the superior mobility. They have ever growing numbers. There's no way for us to land a killing blow on the queen. And I think we should all just get used to the idea of having, you know, our brand new Aproid overlords. See you in the hive mind.